experience the extraordinary synergy of the American Transplant Congress, the premier joint annual meeting of the American Society of Transplant Surgeons, or ASTS, and the American Society of Transplantation, or AST. This influential event connects a diverse community of professionals involved in solid organ and tissue transplantation. Through dynamic educational programs, ATC ensures participants stay ahead of breakthroughs, engage in valuable discussions, and embrace the advancements and practical applications shaping the field. Join us to unlock the power of collaboration at the American Transplant Congress. Hello and welcome back to ATC TV. I'm your host, Rachel Ramos, and today we are looking at the science of tomorrow. The future of transplantations holds the promise of remarkable advancements that will revolutionize the field, offering enhanced outcomes, expanded access to organs, and ensure the well being of transplant recipients. And today, we'll see how. Today, we will sit down with ATC state-of-the-art speaker Jay Fishman and gain key insights into his talk titled, What Have We Learned From Pigs? We also bring AST President Deepali Kumar and AST President-elect Josh Levitsky to our studio to discuss the importance of ATC and the future of the AST. We'll also be taking a seat at the Innovation in Transplantation session to find out what's new in the transplantation world. Then we will hear from the minds leading this new world as we visit the ATC poster sessions. And if that's not enough, we'll also be visiting universities, institutes, and research centers at the forefront of transplantation research and innovation. There will be something for everyone, and we want to make sure you don't miss a minute. Each day, you can find the latest episode of ATC TV on the TVs conveniently placed around the convention center. But don't worry, if you missed us here, you can tune in right from your hotel room on channel 55 at the Manchester Grand Hyatt, channel 74 at the Omni, and channel 43 at the Hilton San Diego Gasland Quarter. And of course, you can also find us on the ATC website, as well as our YouTube and Twitter channels. Plenty of ways to watch. Joining us now is Jay Fishman, Director of the Transplant Infections Diseases and Compromised Host Program at Massachusetts General Hospital to talk about why he is one of this year's state-of-the-art speakers. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The title of your presentation is Infection and Transplantation, What Have We Learned From Pigs? So can you tell us, what have we learned from pigs? So the topic of my talk was really to reintroduce infectious disease as a complication of transplantation in our immunosuppressed patients to the general transplant audience. We have experienced going back now over 20 years using miniature swine as organ donors for studies originally in primates and now going into clinical trials in people. And so it's very exciting a way of rethinking about the risk of infection when you start using another species as your organ donors. Transplant infectious disease has really emerged as a crucial aspect of transplant care. Could you elaborate on how the field has evolved over the years and the impact it had on improving patient outcomes? So when I started in this field, which was a long time ago, we didn't have very many good diagnostic tools and we didn't have very many good therapies. And so as we have evolved with the advent of immunology and molecular biology in particular, we've learned a lot about infectious disease and we've learned how to prevent infectious disease. And so one of my contributions has been to develop a timeline, if you will, of what we can expect in terms of complications after transplantation and then to develop strategies to prevent those infections so that people can get organ transplants and live the lives that they're supposed to in healthy and productive ways. Wow, well, that's incredible to hear there's been so much evolution throughout the past few years. It's been very exciting, it's been fun, and you deal with a lot of scientists and young people, uh, who, and you continue to learn for a very long period of time. So uh, it's been an exciting 40-year journey, really. Standard immunosuppression management has helped in predicting and managing infections in transplant patients. Can you discuss some of the preventative and diagnostic tools that have been developed as a result of this approach? 
So when I started our immunosuppression, the drugs we used to prevent the body from rejecting various organs was pretty crude. And as the immunosuppression has gotten better, we tend to use standard regimens for organ uh, immunosuppression across the entire world. And that has allowed us to look at a timeline and to predict that, for example, we need three months of prevention against cytomegalovirus, or we need six months of protection against pneumocystis, a common respiratory pathogen. So that with that advent, what we've been able to do is protect our patients from the most common infections and move on to using new or better immunosuppression with less risk. Again, it's all about getting the people back into the community and to be safe in doing things they want. But it used to be that if you took up gardening or you took up some sort of animal breeding or whatever you did after you transplant, you'd get sick from your exposures. Now we can predict that and now we can prevent that with greater certainty. We understand the basic mechanisms of disease that we can devise better diagnostic and therapeutic strategies in the clinic. And so as new technologies become available, new culture systems, new genetic technologies, new immunologic systems, we're able to apply those, figure out how diseases work, and then come back to the patients and say, I can do a better job. So we have to stay on top of the basic science to really advance transplantation globally. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for talking with me. Now let's head on over to Virginia, where at the Hume Lee Transplant Center, their patients come first. They have some of the best one-year organ transplant outcomes in the nation and are constantly challenging and redefining the transplant space. So let's take a look. Hume Lee Transplant Center is a multi-organ transplant center anchored at Virginia Commonwealth University. Its mission is to serve patients, educate transplant professionals, and enhance research and discovery in the field of transplantation. We are very patient-centered. Patient is first. The one thing which I'm really excited about this program is that we are, every single day, we are trying to do things to increase access to transplantation for patients through cutting-edge technology. A program with this kind of longevity and history really lends itself to innovation. It's almost impossible to exist that long without constantly examining what you're doing, trying to improve it, and trying to take this kind of life-saving therapy that we do to the next level. Now let's delve into groundbreaking advancements that are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Brace yourselves for inspiring talks, cutting edge technologies, and visionary ideas that are reshaping the landscape of transplantation. Get ready to witness the future in this year's Innovation in Transplantation session. Welcome to the Innovations in Transplantation session at ATC 2023, where groundbreaking advancements are taking center stage. In this session, we delve into the fascinating world of xenotransplantation, the use of non-human species as a potential solution to the organ shortage crisis. Attendees were captivated by the stories of groundbreaking procedures, including the successful transplantation of genetically modified pig kidneys and a compassionate use protocol for a genetically modified heart transplant in a living human recipient. These remarkable milestones signaled the dawn of a new era, offering hope and potential solutions to the persistent challenge of organ shortage. Engaging discussions ensued as experts and participants explored the ethical and practical considerations surrounding the future of xenotransplantation. Collectively, they contemplated the transformative impact and the path forward for this groundbreaking approach. The Innovations in Transplantation session at ATC 2023 will be forever remembered as a turning point in the field, where the unimaginable became reality. It was a testament to the resilient human spirit, innovation, and the relentless pursuit of pushing the boundaries of what is possible in transplantation.
And now let's keep looking forward and this time with machine learning. The Molecular Microscope Diagnostic System revolutionizes organ transplants globally by combining gene expression analysis and machine learning to provide comprehensive reports for doctors to improve treatments and interventions for better patient outcomes. Let's take a look. What we are addressing is an unmet need. It's a deeper understanding of the diseases and the injuries that organ transplants develop. The Molecular Microscope Diagnostic System, or MMDX, is a system for assessing organ transplant biopsies using gene expression and machine learning. One of the most important things with our project is that we build different machine learning algorithms and classifiers, uh, as well as these multi-gene scores. You can visualize that by actually looking at the picture where you can see all those bright regions and dark regions, but it also gets output as just data. And it provides the clinician with a report that you know has dozens of molecular scores on it, which guides them in their decision making for the patient. And the outcome for that would be better understanding of how to treat, but also new treatments. So. A test doesn't change someone's life. A test leading to an intervention, that changes someone's life. That's our goal, to develop new interventions, better treatments. Welcome back to ATC TV. I'm your host, Rachel Ramos, and I am joined now by AST President, Dr. Deepali Kumar. Thank you so much for joining me today, doctor. Thank you for having me, Rachel. Yeah, absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that the industry itself faces as well as the society? So I think we face an, a number of challenges. I think one of our primary challenges is to grow the workforce in the coming years. You know, as we do more transplants and there are more people living with transplants, we need more healthcare providers to care for them. And so I think one of our biggest challenges is going to be attracting people to the field of transplantation. And that's going to be in all specialties, all areas, um, medicine, surgery, uh, and even research. You know, we need more research to move the field forward. Absolutely. I, I think that will be our biggest challenge. Yeah, absolutely. And what would you say some of your greatest accomplishments have been in your presidency? Well, this past year has truly been incredible for the AST. We have grown our membership uh, significantly and um, we are providing fantastic education, uh, a large uh, number of research grants as well uh, for our members to do cutting edge research. And we have also generated this year a strategic plan for the AST. You know, there's so much going on in transplantation that we needed to make sure that our organization was laser focused on certain efforts. And with the strategic plan, we will be able to focus our uh, efforts appropriately. Um, now, the strategic plan includes uh, research, it includes uh, fantastic education, it includes growing the workforce, uh, which is a, one of our challenges, and uh, engaging members. You know, that that is going to be uh, what we want to do going forward for the next uh, several years. This year, we focused on um, strengthening our organization we are also uh, focusing on international outreach. So um, we are creating a program within the American Society of Transplantation to um, make sure that we provide excellent education beyond the borders of the United States. And I think that will enrich uh, everyone. Yes, absolutely. It definitely sounds like you've had some success and just more success to come. So lastly, what would you say is the significance behind the ATC meeting and how the two societies come together to really create something bigger than themselves? So we are uh, proud to partner with our sister society, the ASTS, to put on an incredible meeting, which is the ATC. And the ATC truly brings the entire world in one place to um, network, to 
learn great science and uh, just to share best practices. And so this ATC and all ATCs, uh, ATC is the premier meeting of transplantation in the world. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Deepali Kumar has given us insight into what AST has accomplished. And now let's see what the society has its sights set on. Joining us in studio is AST President-elect Josh Levitsky to discuss the future of AST and the transplantation field. Thank you so much for joining me today, doctor. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so can you tell us what are some of your top goals for the incoming year as president? That's a loaded question because there's a lot to do in the AST. Um, but I would say the, the top goals are really to take what we have done and really start implementing it. So last year we spent a long time developing a strategic plan for AST that has a number of different areas where we have lots of projects that are ongoing and we're gonna look carefully at all these projects and new projects coming in and try to really put them under our plan as a society. And um, this is a, uh, something that we've had a strategic plan before, but now it's really formalized and we're gonna put it into play. So one of my goals is to implement that and so that we can track it and see what we're doing in the society over time and the success of each of these projects. AST is a really um, amazing society and we wanna um, take all, everything that everybody's doing and put it into the plan moving forward. So that's one thing. The other, the other uh, major objective is really to, um, you know, just stick to the foundation of the society, um, which is really supporting our members and our patients. And so there's gonna be a fair number of uh, things that we're gonna need to address this year in terms of public policy. Um, that involves um, the organ allocation system in the U.S. and um, AST is a really big player in terms of um, having a voice here, especially from the members and the patient side. So that there there will be some sure some things that are going to come up this year that we're, that AST is going to really try to help on to to um, enhance our system of of uh, organ transplantation. And then I think a, a big thing is supporting innovations in, in transplant. And so we get a lot of um, uh, interaction with industry partners, um, members who are doing different types of uh, innovative type of research. And so we want to be able to support that in our society. And so um, a, lot, a lot comes in. It's all how to make it work. And my job is to help lead the society and implement all the things that we're doing. Yes, absolutely. Lots of great things to come, it sounds like. Yes. And lastly, how would you say you're going to, or how do you plan to use the power of the ATC to really enhance the betterment of transplantation knowledge? Yes, ATC is a very powerful meeting. It's a real master meeting of the minds, but um, it's also a place for uh, knowledge, but also interaction. And what I'm really excited about this meeting, it really feels like we're back to uh, a real meeting that is um, where you can see everybody's faces and and interact with people. I mean, I've had so many amazing discussions these last few days that weren't possible in the last few years. And so moving forward, we want we want to get back on track. And this ATC is really back on track and future ones to, to have it be this really amazing interactive meeting that it's supposed to be. And um, I feel like this is this meeting this year really is representative of it. It's, and again, congratulations to the organizing committee and the chairs for putting this incredible meeting together. And I look forward to more of this uh, in the future, more interaction, um, more science presented, uh, more interaction with industry, all of our partners. So it's, I'm really happy to be, to have ATC back. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to say to AST members about this upcoming year? I would say just um, get involved, um, stay involved. Um, AST has a lot going on. It's a big society. Our membership is really growing. Um, but we have, while it's a big society, there's a lot of parts of it where members can get involved. As you know, all the COPs, the committees. Um, I want to open, you know, my, uh, to be open to anybody to, if they want to email me, if they have an idea, 
I would like to be able to, you know, have that open door to be able to take an idea from, from members and, and explore it. So I, I want us to be, while it's a big society and it feels like there's a, there's a lot going on and maybe you can't get involved, you really can. And um, the way AST is structured is to really have a big society, but breaking down into lots of little parts where you can become active, make a difference. So, um, like I said, we want to be um, a member facing society and I want the members to feel like they're really part of a larger mission. Well, best of luck in your Thank presidency you. in the upcoming year. Thank you for having me. The University of Chicago Medicine's heart transplant program has the shortest wait times in the nation for receiving a donor heart, best survival rates in the country for heart transplant patients, and is one of the most experienced medical centers in the world for multi-organ transplantation. Let's find out how all of this is possible and take a trip to Chicago. So U Chicago Medicine has a very rich and long history of transplantation. Heart transplant has taken on that tradition and it now has become one of the leading programs in the country uh, under the banner of UChicago Medicine. It is very rare for a program to have the highest survival rates and at the same time have the shortest wait time for organs. And UChicago's program over the last three years has been the best both in wait times, the shortest wait times, and in survival. UChicago Medicine does roughly about 60 transplants a year, and about 25% of, uh, of that volume um, are multi-organ transplants. The majority of those are heart kidney transplants, but you also do a number of heart liver transplants and heart liver kidney transplants. And I think what it comes down to is that we have a really collaborative multidisciplinary team to take, take on these really complicated cases and do multi-organ transplants successfully. We are back here in San Diego and we want to hear from the minds behind what's new in transplantation and there's no better place to do so than right here at the ATC Poster Sessions. We want to hear from the minds behind what's new in transplantation and there's no better place to do so than right here at the ATC Poster Sessions. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Oklahoma College of Medicine in Oklahoma City. And being here to present my research, it has just been such a great opportunity to get experience presenting research. I know that as a future physician, um, this is something that will be, something I'll be doing lifelong is um, learning and presenting and speaking with people. I really enjoy coming to ATC. Um, I'm a sociologist by training, so I don't have the clinical background, but I, I do enjoy seeing the excitement around um, kind of serving patients and finding out uh, these little snips of insight into what their experiences are and how people can turn that into a intervention in some way. I'm pretty excited because I actually start uh, medical school in the fall, so uh, it was a big step, you know, to, to get here and get this uh, presented. You know, being able to walk through and talk to everyone about their posters, it, it, it's it's amazing to see, um, you know, the vast reach that this conference has all over the world. I actually had some of the physicians that were on other research studies that I based my study on come by and talk to me. Um, so that's been really exciting and inspiring to know that I'm making a difference um, and that people are recognizing my research as something that is impactful to the transplant community. And that brings us to the end of day three of ATC and our second episode. We hope you've enjoyed taking a look inside ATC here in San Diego, as well as learning about the different universities and institutions at the forefront of transplant research. Be sure to tune in here tomorrow where we'll hear from ASTS president and president elect, this year's ASTS pioneer award winner, state-of-the-art speaker, Hiro Nakauchi, and much, much more. There will be something for everyone, and we want to make sure you don't miss a minute. Each day, you can find the latest episode of ATC TV on the TVs conveniently placed around the convention center. But don't worry, if you missed us here, you can tune in right from your hotel room on channel 55 at the Manchester Grand Hyatt, channel 74 at the Omni, and channel 43 at the Hilton San Diego Gasland Quarter. And of course, you can also find us on the ATC website 
as well as our YouTube and Twitter channels. Plenty of ways to watch. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you right back here tomorrow for more exciting news and highlights from the ATC 2023 meeting. We'll see you there.